Hey friends, this is Brian from This Is Tech Today. And recently, a camera mod came out for the original Pixel device and Nexus devices. It's called Camera NX. And it adds a lot of the exclusive features of the Pixel 2 devices, like AR stickers, and most interestingly enough, the portrait mode. If you want to download that, I'll have a link down below in the description. Since this exists, I really wanted to find out how this 2016 Pixel device stands up to 2017 flagship devices. I posted some of these images on my social media channels and some of you thought I was using the iPhone 10, the Note 8, or the Pixel 2 XL. I'm not gonna tell you which ones they are yet, we're gonna find out at the end, but if you wanna be a part of those posts and get some sneak peeks, follow me on my social media channels at This Is Tech Today. Since I'm not disclosing which camera is used for each picture, for now, we're just gonna to refer to each phone as phone A, B, and C, and they'll be in the same order every single time. And let's have some fun with it. Go ahead and leave your guesses down below on which phone is being used for A, B, and C. And then I'll let you know when I'm going to review which phone it is. Go ahead and reply to your own comment and see if you got it right. And I'd love to know the reasons why you picked a specific phone for each picture. No cheating. So let's first check out the front-facing cameras. Okay, this first picture is with a very bright light behind me to overexpose a shot, and it's a very good test of dynamic range. Can it expose the face well while also handling the extreme brightness behind it? So the first thing that I can notice is that on phone A, the left-hand side is really blown out. You can see on the face to the left, the detail is lost there, and it looks a lot like a floating ear, and a lot of it looks like it's out of focus. Phone B has a really good contrasty and sharp look to it. The outline that creates the blur is really good, but the face is a bit dark. For Phone C, it's not as sharp or contrasty as Phone B, but the face is brighter. It looks kind of dreamy, but that is likely the result of a lens flare. This next shot is with me in a parking lot. It's a very common environment. It's at dusk. There's some store lights and then a parking lot light lighting me on the right side of the image. So phone A, we can see that the edges are super fuzzy and it's not really a natural transition into blur like a, a normal DSLR but there's more contrast in the face, so that part can look good depending on what you're looking for. Phone B has a really sharp and good facial exposure. Uh, there's a good cutout, but a few artifacts on the left cheek and the right shoulder, but the hair is great on both B and C. So if we look at C, it's softer than phone B, and it has a really good exposure on the face as well. There's a great cutout with a slight artifact by the ear, and it does have the most natural look to it. This next shot is just me standing in the street with a street light there and some flickering lights around me from like leftover Christmas lights. So it's really dark. It's probably gonna be very noisy, but let's find out. And keep in mind on the front facing camera, a lot of these phones have a flash feature. So in this particular picture, I'm not utilizing it. And I'll show you what that looks like on the next picture. So phone A, you can see that it's really dark and there's a lot of noise there. I really can't tell if the bokeh or the blur effect is being used because everything ends up looking like a painting on it. There's just not a lot of detail there. I just don't know why the face is not exposed well. It's just not registering the light properly for some reason. On phone B and C, you can see that the light is exposing itself a bit more. I really do like the exposure on the face of phone B. It's sharp and there's a decent cutout, but of course there's a lot of noise in the image. However, it has the most natural color to it, and in turn, it has the most natural image. Phone C has the best cutout in the bokeh. Interestingly enough, the blur hides any nose that could be there in the background, which can either be good as it removes noise, or it creates too much of a contrast between the subject that can really give away that this is a software processing. The color temperature on this one is a bit yellow. This next image is the same thing, but it has that front facing screen flash thing. So pretty much what's happening is when you take a picture and it's in low light, it'll light up the screen really brightly so that it can illuminate your face. So it looks a lot like this. So you see how it gets really bright there? So let's check it out. So it's really obvious that phone A and C have a very warm color temperature to it. Phone B has a really cool color temperature to it. I really don't like it since it makes me think of like a surgery table. It does have the most detail, but it's not really flattering. Phone C, I would say has the best exposure in the face. There's a more smooth and flattering look to it. Darks at the top look really weird though. They're crushed and it does seem to have the best blur in the background. Overall, I think Phone C has the most flattering look in the face, and it has the least amount of noise in the background because of the blur. 
Okay, for these next set of pictures, I utilize the back camera. This next one is interesting because it has a very busy background on the left-hand side and a very contrasty skyline in the right side of the image. So there's a lot of complex things going on in the context, which can create a lot of artifacts with the machine learning. I would say Phone A has the best exposure. You can see how the other two look a bit darker. The hair looks really weird though. It has a low resolution look to it instead of a kind of natural blur. To its benefit, the blur transition is more progressive rather than a hard cutout. Functionally though, most people may not prefer the look of phone A. They would rather have the hard cutout. Now phone B has the sharpest and least saturated look. It's a bit cool in color, but it's very sharp with only a few minor artifacts on the right shoulder. Phone C is warmer and a bit red in its saturation. There are some artifacts in the top left hair and ear, and especially on both sides of the beard. This next shot is just me standing in a room. All the lights are off except for a small Christmas tree, maybe about four or five feet away from me. Low light is extremely difficult and often creates a lot of noise. Okay, so <laughs> it's really obvious that phone A is just awful in this environment. You can hardly see me at all. It's underexposed and incredibly noisy. We'll just move on. Phone B is surprisingly well exposed for the environment. It's warmer in temperature and has more of a blur in the background. If you look at Phone C, it didn't really blur, so Phone B seems to be the only one that has successfully blurred the background, even if there are a lot of artifacts on the right side. And if you look at the left where the wall is, you can see there's a lot of noise, and the subject is a bit soft. I mean, like, the image is. <laughs> On phone C, the color temperature is the most natural look, but it didn't blur the background for some reason. It is sharper and there's more detail on the subject. The hair makes it obvious if you compare both phone B and C. This next shot is with the sun behind the subject and then an ever increasing depth is the background, so that wall. And if there is some sort of natural progression of that blur effect for portrait mode, this would be able to show that natural progression if there is any at all. This will also test a lot of the dynamic range. Phone A has the most saturated image to it, with the left looking a bit blown out, so the detail is lost, but the cutout is pretty good, and an increasing blur on the shirt, which is really impressive and natural. Phone B is a solid photo, but there's a really big artifact on the chin, and oddly, the cookie at the bottom. There's more detail and contrast in the right side stairs behind the subject. Phone C, the blur is done really well, and you can see the HDR exposure working incredibly well on the face. It just looks really clear. This next image is gonna spoil it for you. So make sure you've put your guesses down below in the comments before you go on to this next part. Go ahead and pause and leave your comments down below and then go back to it and see if you got it right. This is your warning, here we go. The first thing that you notice is that phone B isn't even working, it's not blurring the background. This is the Pixel device with the Camera NX mod, and for some reason it didn't want to process it. It just kept glitching out and it doesn't seem to want to work on anything other than people. If we zoom in, we can see that Phone A has a lot of artifacts in the complex plant area. Phone C has minor artifacts there, but it's really impressive in what it chooses to blur. The leaves in the back are blurred while the ones in the front are not, which is kind of amazing. If we look on the right here by the Google Home, we can see that both Phone A and Phone C have some artifacts around the edges. So here are the results. Phone A is the iPhone 10. Phone B is the Pixel from 2016, which is kind of shocking, and then phone C is the 2017 Pixel 2 XL. Surprisingly, it, many of the guesses on social media put this as it's the iPhone 10, it's the Note 8, and then the Pixel 2 XL. So did you get any of your selections right? What made you associate a certain phone with phone A, B, or C? And then which phone do you think did the best? With the Camera NX mod, I really think the original 2016 Pixel XL does a phenomenal job. It utilizes a lot of those exclusive features from the Pixel 2 device, and sometimes excels at it better than the Pixel 2 XL. There does seem to be more sharpness overall on a consistent basis, and in many cases, it handled the cutout for the portrait blur better than the Pixel 2. Well, at least for portrait shots. That's kind of amazing when you think about the software that's behind all of this. The iPhone 10 has two lenses there, the Pixel 2 and 2XL have dual pixels, and then the original Pixel phone just has a normal sensor. So all this is happening through software. That's why I think what Google is doing is really phenomenal. It's kind of mind-blowing. With the iPhone 10, you have Face ID and all those sensors there. There's tons of sensors there to calculate the portrait blur, while Google just has a sensor. I'm really impressed. I'm really excited to find out where photography goes on cell phones in the next few years. 
It's very surprising. And I really think that this mod may actually prevent people from upgrading from the original Pixel to the Pixel 2 XL. Previously, I was thinking of selling my old Pixel device, but I may just hang on to this one though and save it as a backup. So now that you know the results and you've seen what the Camera NX mod can do, what are your thoughts? If you were planning on purchasing the Pixel 2 device, are you still thinking of doing that? And if you had the original Pixel phone, are you thinking of keeping that even longer now? Go ahead and leave your comments down below. And while you're down there, can you give me a thumbs up and subscribe? When you thumbs up my videos, it helps me as a small YouTuber for other people to discover my videos. The YouTube algorithm really utilizes that. If you subscribe to my channel, I have some videos coming up on the Whitestone Dome Tempered Glass Screen Protector for the Pixel 2 XL, which I'm very excited about. And then a camera comparison of the portrait mode with the Essential Phone, the Pixel 2 XL, and the iPhone 10. And of course, so much more. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.